We can finally take the wraps off some of these Z890 chipset motherboards, but have you ever wondered how something like the Z890 Tomahawk from MSI is made? Well, to find out, we need to take a little trip. It smells like solder. I can smell all of the components being soldered. Mm. Guys, i got something really exciting to share with you. We are in Shenzhen, China at the MSI factory getting hands-on with lots of really crazy new products and a lot of stuff that isn't out yet. So special thanks to MSI for flying us out to China to check out all this cool new stuff. Let's go inside, dive in and take a look. You ready, Claire? Let's go, come on, let's go. Look at that. Check out all the new stuff. Time to suit up. You guys ready for a quick transformation? Three, two, one. Good enough. The first stop in producing a motherboard is this room here. This is almost like a library of every single component that goes onto a motherboard. These machines organize everything, they catalog everything, and then it knows how much inventory they've got of every single individual little component, like capacitors, MOSFETs, sockets, everything. And basically what happens is an order goes into this machine, it sorts the order out, it then places them onto this little conveyor belt line, it then sends all of these components to the production line so all of the motherboards can be produced. Anything you can imagine that goes on a board, from chipsets, to MOSFETs, to capacitors, to BIOS chip, basically everything comes from this location onto the production line. It smells like solder in here. There's a solder paste printer. And basically what they do is they use this to attach all of the surface mount components to the motherboards. It's really interesting to see this because I don't know if this will translate well to video, but the scale of this place, this is insane. I'm, I'm lost for words. This is like, the, it's every nerd's dream to come to a place like this. I'm in a motherboard factory, guys. This is insane. Look at it. It just goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. There's some things that we can't show you here which are proprietary to MSI, but the blank PCBs are then placed into this. This is the solder paste printer. The way this works is it's kind of like a screen printer, but for solder paste. A motherboard gets put in, there's a template, the solder paste, which is kind of like thermal paste with tiny little solder balls in it, and essentially what it does is it screen prints it in a perfect template across the motherboard so all of the surface mount components can then be soldered to the board. It's basically a screen printer for solder. And the motherboard is underneath this, well the blank PCB is under it, it's not a motherboard yet, we'll get to that in a minute. And Essentially, this is to place the surface mount components on top. Then the blank PCB gets pushed into a machine that begins to place a whole bunch of the surface mount components. This can be absolutely anything that is not a through hole component. So things like MOSFETs, the chipset, the socket itself. So there's a lot of different stuff here that could be mounted. They're all on these reels and the machine knows exactly what needs to go where on the motherboard and it places it and then it puts it into this machine here. This is called the reflow machine and what this does is it heats up the board and then makes that solder paste turn into solder and then mounts all of the components on the board. It then goes into a machine that does an optical inspection of the mounting of everything that just happened with the solder paste and all of those surface mount components and then it goes through the process again, all the rest of the service mount stuff gets mounted here. Look, this is a brand new Z890 chipset right here on a reel. There's thousands of these new chipsets on this reel. And again, the exact same process all over again. It goes through the reflow machine, all of the other components get done, 
This whole process happened so quickly that if you blinked, you wouldn't even know what was happening right in front of your eyes. At this stage here, all of the surface mount components are mounted to the board already. That means DIMM slots, CPU socket, PCIe slots, MOSFETs, VRM, chipset, basically anything you can imagine that's surface mounted to the board. In this part of the production line, some of the components are getting a jig to hold them into place as it goes through the next inspection station. And this is an optical inspection by an operator that measures everything to see that everything is correctly spaced and that it doesn't need to be repaired. Part of this process is using an X-ray to see if there's any damaged components from any part of the first heating process. This is very important because anything can go wrong at any of these steps. But that's what all this automation's for, is to make it easy. At this stage is where all of the through-hole components get installed. So any of the headers on the board, certain types of capacitors are through-hole, and basically anything that goes all the way through the PCB. So this is similar to the other processes that we saw with the reflow with the solder paste, but everything here is done with a different process, which we're gonna to get to in a second. But essentially what happens is all of these components here cannot be placed by machine because they're just not accurate enough yet and they need to be done by hand. So what you're gonna see is there's a bunch of operators on the production line and they'll be doing things like inserting PCIe slots, they'll be inserting some capacitors, They'll do all of the rear I.O. and make sure everything is not moving. There's a little tool they use to inspect any vibration and then it moves onto this machine here. This is my favorite part of the whole production line. This solders all of the through hole components with a technique called wave soldering. It's a wave of molten solder and the motherboard runs along the surface of this molten solder and it solders the whole backside of the motherboard. It is really, really cool to see this in action and it smells cool too. I really do love the smell of solder as you've probably gathered. Once the wave soldering is complete, it then goes into another inspection process and the board gets cleaned along these cleaning wheels here. This will get rid of any debris or anything left over from the wave soldering. Once the boards are clean, it then goes into another inspection process which tests the motherboards to see if there's any faults in any of the circuitry and to make sure that anything is placed in the correct position. Like I said, this is a very rigorous process to make sure nothing goes wrong here. Then, once that's complete, there's the first power test. This is called the in-circuit test. And this basically tests for continuity with all of the traces on the motherboard making sure all of the motherboards should be in a functioning state. That's the most important thing, guys. The motherboards, yeah, they can be produced in this really cool futuristic fashion, but they have to work. Otherwise, there's no point in them being built in the first place. This process is probably the longest of the processes just to make sure everything is absolutely perfect here. Next, we move on to other things like placing heat sinks onto the board because we get ready to power the boards up for the first time to see if they actually work with a CPU in the socket. So basically what's happening here, before that happens, this is the next most important thing. What they do is they look inside the socket, they inspect to see that there's no bent pins, and then, only then, do they put on the socket retention system. The machine then tests all of the tolerances on the socket and then tightens everything up automatically. Next is testing to see that the systems boot up with the new motherboards. This is a really cool testing scenario and I'll explain this to you. What you're seeing is everything that you can imagine being plugged into the motherboard is plugged in right now. Like I'm talking about every single port. The way this works is it's all on a jig type of system. So essentially what happens is CPUs get placed in the socket. This is the CPU coming out of the socket. This is a brand new Intel Core Ultra processor that they use on the production line to do these power tests. So I thought I'd show this in reverse order here. Look at that. Pulling a new CPU out of these new sockets. And then when a new board goes into the jig, they populate absolutely everything 
So all M.2 slots get tested here. All PCIe slots get tested here. Every SATA port, every USB port, absolutely everything. So once it's sat in the jig, watch this cool little motion. They pull the handle down, everything gets plugged in. They push the other handle in on the side. All of the ports get plugged in. All of the SATA just got plugged in as well. Then they put a core ultra processor into the new socket and then they power it up to see how it tests. Now we can't show some of the stuff because it is proprietary, but I can show them powering up these boards. You know, a lot of this process is a proprietary company tech, so we can't show everything. It's just the nature of the beast when it comes to producing things. If there's any faults that show up, the machine gives them a readout, they do some continuity tests, and then they can resolder anything by hand or repair anything by hand. And the machine is clever enough to show where the issue is if there is an issue in continuity. This one here is actually testing fine, and this circuit is fine, but they, they did this just to demonstrate how it all works. If there is a fault, the board gets tagged, it gets put into a bucket, and then it gets remade and retested, and make sh does not leave the production line unless it is 100% working. You know, and that's the bottom line. Everything needs to work before it leaves the production line. Now, believe it or not, the motherboard is essentially finished at this point. There's just some more hand assembling to be done here, like putting on the rest of the M.2 heat sinks, fastening up the I.O. shields, and all of that stuff is still done by hand. And it's a very, very quick process. Then everything comes off those jigs they're placed onto the conveyor belt on the production line again. Everything is boxed and checked by hand. All the serial numbers got applied earlier through the manufacturing process automatically. So this is basically them putting it in a box so it comes to your house and you can build yourself a new PC with a Z890 motherboard. Once everything is individually boxed, it's then put into a carton of a few boards. They're then weighed, put into inventory, and then ready to be shipped. And it, it's insane how quick this whole process is. Look at that, just boxes of new motherboards. The most interesting thing about this whole process is it's less complicated than you think it is. And just like that, from the start of a production line to the end, We've seen one of these new Intel motherboards being produced. How crazy is that? So quick. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this bit of a different video. I've never been into a motherboard factory before, and it's insane to see a PCB go from literally a PCB all the way to a full motherboard in a matter of minutes. The whole process is insane. And to me, it's crazy that there's only a few human interaction stops. Everything is automated now. The machinery is super futuristic. I'm sorry, I completely geek out on this stuff. And if you're a super nerd like me, I know that you love seeing how stuff is made. But that's gonna do it for me all the way here in Shenzhen, China. I'm out of here, I'll see you guys later. I'm tired, it's hot.